my God. It's every commuter's worst nightmare. Amtrak North, over. Amtrak 501. Emergency, emergency, emergency. We are on the ground. We are on the bridge. Five at the swing on the freeway. Need EMS. A train traveling from Seattle to Portland derailing while crossing an overpass. And they're requesting all possible units with bodies on the freeway. At least three people dead. On board, approximately 84 passengers and crew members. 13 out of 14 train cars jumped the tracks, some spilling over onto busy Interstate 5 below. Oh my God, that train is derailed over the freeway. Some train cars suspended in the air, others crushing vehicles below. Within minutes, Interstate 5 awash with red and blue lights. That is crazy. People were in shock, and a lot of them, they just went and they sat down with their, you know, their, their faces in the palm of their hands like, what's happening? Daniel Konzelman and his girlfriend Alicia were driving by the scene when they stopped to help. I went down underneath the freeway and started working my way through those trains. One of the trains had tipped upside down and kind of spilled the passengers out, and then the train came down on top of them. One of the gentlemen had been thrown from the train. He was one of the fatalities. 100 people, including passengers, crew, and motorists below, rushed to nearby hospitals. There are at least three fatalities. Amtrak's Cascades train number 501 was on its inaugural passenger run. It was traveling down a rail bypass that was formerly used for freight, but was recently modified to carry passenger trains. The train departed Seattle at 6 a.m., scheduled to reach Portland at 9.20. Around 7.30 a.m., passenger Chris Carnes, chair of the Pierce County Transit Advisory Board, published this tweet. Wow, this train is fast. We are passing up traffic on I-5. Moments later, around 7.34 a.m., a locomotive and 12 cars careening off both sides of that very overpass. Well, we were going between 70 and 80 miles an hour, and we heard a, a creaking, a little bit of a creaking sound, and it, the train started to wobble. Just below that busy southbound traffic. And then we were catapulted at the seats in front of us. And at the next thing that we knew, our car had crumpled at a, a portion, and we were um, down an embankment. I looked around. There was windows and glass, and it was a very particular smell that I can't really describe. The conductor radioing for help. Hey, guys, what happened? Uh, we were coming around the corner to take the bridge over I-5 there, uh, right north into Squally, and we went on the ground. Is everybody okay? I'm still figuring that out. We got cars everywhere and down onto the highway. As soon as I know exactly where all my train is, I'll let you know. The first car was on the ground. The second car looks like the passenger was down. And then the third was dangling, and the fourth and fifth were up on the track. About 20 EMS started just flooding toward the area. And so a lot of people on the northbound lane was going over to help them as well. The cause of the derailment is still being investigated. Everyone's familiar with black boxes on airplanes, but trains also have similar recorders, and they're capturing parameters such as speed, throttle position, braking, and even whether or not they're blowing the whistle or the horn on the train. So these devices can be really helpful to investigators to really corroborate with what they're hearing from witnesses. But the owner of the track where the train derailed confirmed to ABC News that the speed limit on that portion of the track is 30 miles per hour. Officials have not yet confirmed how fast this train was traveling. Earlier this month, the mayor of Lakewood, Washington, expressed concerns about safety. Come back when there is that accident and try to justify not putting in those safety enhancements. Or you can go back now and advocate for the money to do it because this project was never needed and endangers our citizens. When we got to the scene, it was obvious that there were some fatalities and there were a lot of injuries. Multiple cars and trucks were struck by train cars that left the train tracks and went down onto the road. Uh, the people that were in all the vehicles, even though when you see the pictures, it's pretty horrific. At this point, nobody in any of the vehicles uh, is a fatal. The fatals are all contained to the train. A medical tent was set up nearby to help triage the numerous victims, nearby hospitals asking for blood donations. We also have crew members who have survived, and so interviewing them to understand what was going on immediately prior to the derailment is going to be very important for the investigators, and they'll want to do that as soon as possible. Today's accident marks the second derailment this year in the same county. The first back in July, when a passenger train carrying 267 people skidded off the tracks. They slam on the brakes, and we're 
all of a sudden tilted. No casualties, only a handful of minor injuries. However, an investigation later showed the train's engineer was driving too fast, triggering a derailment switch on the tracks prior to reaching a drawbridge. Notify Amtrak to shut down the entire northeast corridor. We have a major event here. Speed also a factor in 2015 when an Amtrak passenger train traveling twice the speed limit sped off the tracks outside of Philadelphia. Keep crawling, okay? Crawl forward, sir. This is all that was left of the train carrying 238 people at the time. The derailment killing eight, leaving hundreds injured. A federal report would later note that a culture of safety lapses at Amtrak was responsible for the collision, adding that the accident could have been prevented if the tracks had been equipped with a system that enforces speed restrictions, known as positive train control, or PTC. This positive train control idea is something that was mandated by law long ago, but Amtrak has been very slow to implement it. What the, what the U.S. is putting in right now is a rudimentary autopilot. This is the kind of autopilot that in aviation we would find in the 1940s. Sound Transit, the owner of the track, says PTC was installed here, but in a phone conference, Amtrak CEO Richard Anderson told reporters that PTC was not activated. He did not want to speculate on the speed of the train or scenarios that could have caused the derailment. There's still too much room for human error. There's still too much old technology. There's old track. There are old trains, so we're dealing really with a train system that's decades behind the rest of the world. This is a tragic event, and on behalf of everyone at Amtrak, I want to express that we're deeply saddened by what happened here today. Back in Washington, debris and twisted wreckage still block two major transportation vanes. There's a thorough investigation underway to determine what happened. Tonight, investigators trying to answer that lingering question, what caused the train to derail and claim one too many lives? I'm Clayton Sandell for Nightline in DuPont, Washington. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.